We want to start off with a reminder that we are not doctors. Before you make any changes or try something new, always consult with your doctor and medical team first. Chronic illness can vary from patient to patient, so it's always best to consult with your own doctor for what is best for you. Hello and welcome to IB Determined. I'm your host, Michelle Harvey. And I'm also your host, Mason Harvey. And if you've been listening, you know that I talk from the position of a caregiver and mm. Mason's mom. <laughs> and mom. Yeah. And I have Crohn's disease. So today's topic is going to be about mental health. And this deserves many episodes because it's such an important topic and it can cover so many different things. And, and it doesn't just apply to chronic illness or Crohn's disease. So I hope anyone listening can get some value from what we talk about today. And hopefully we'll be able to talk more in the future or talk to some guests and bring cover it a little bit more mm -hmm, cover it more because it's going to be hard to do all of it <laughs> oh, in one today so we know we'll lose you guys you're not going to want to listen to us talk for over an hour about this so you want to go to bed yeah <laughs> yeah so let's start first with a flare update real yeah. quick how mason's doing i'm doing much better mm -hmm. like a lot better actually i would say it's normal. just about back to normal yeah you? Yeah. So Exciting. we're, yeah. So that's really good news. And that, that means that what we've been doing to treat this is working. So that's how it's going. So everything's looking good. <laughs> On to the next step. Yeah. So this is going to be kind of scripted. And then where, where I like ask Mason questions, because a lot of this is going to come directly from the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. We have a lot of information from our own perspective, but these are the experts that have written this up and have this available to you. So we kind of want to share this resource so you're familiar with it and you know about it. So hopefully you'll you'll like the format and guys will get some use out of today's episode. episode. If you have any thoughts of self-harm, suicide, or you're really struggling, reach out for help. You can always call 911, go to an emergency room. Or there's also a suicide hotline at 1-800-SUICIDE. These are things that are important for you to realize that you are not alone. No. And to just treat the mental health symptoms like you would if you were having a physical symptom, if you were not feeling well, and to address it immediately. So there's a lot of aspects about this disease that we didn't understand at the time when Mason was diagnosed. diagnosed yeah. It was already, I mean, the diagnosis itself, it itself was, was crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Oh and God, I've been diagnosed with something. What is it? <laughs> yeah, it was difficult. And so the GI at the time, his, his doctor had recommended that we get a therapist for Mason. For us, it was important. And I think this is key for anyone listening. If you've gone to therapy and you think it didn't work for me because that the therapist didn't just didn't get it. You have to find the right therapist for you. Yes, that is key. So you didn't get along with them as far as feeling like comfortable, you could trust them and talk to them and open up to them. Find that person. That was, that was a huge, I think, turning point for us too, is finding those other options because we we're treating Mason's physical symptoms and we we're realizing how important it was to also treat the mental symptoms. Another aspect of this is not to forget the caregivers. So don't forget about yourselves as caregivers either. And make sure you have something in place and you're also getting the help that you need. You need. Yeah. I know some of the caregivers and parents out here do not put themselves first. Mm -hmm. So I think if we can relate it to uh, being stronger for your child, some people may do it. So just it's important for caregivers to look out for a few different things with children. They, they have their different social challenges. There's different aspects of their growth. And depending whatever age they're at, they're going through a lot of changes and you know, making sure that they're, they're eating well and getting them to appointments. These are the challenges Mason is facing, um, just missing school and trying to catch up and having to do weekend school. Cause you have to go to, uh, the hospital to get like shots and infusions and that will take yeah. up almost an entire day. So then you have to bump school ahead on to the Saturdays or Sundays, mm -hmm. but you know, we make it work. 
Yeah. There's another any really anything else you can do. So we just make it work. Right. Yeah. And I think that you knowing that you have a system set up isn't it, it relieves some stress for you. Yeah. So that way it definitely relieves stress. Right. So there's and then there's also um some kids experience fatigue. I, I know Mason did when he's was more like going through the anemia phases of it and uh, the inflammation was really high. So a lot of kids go through just being tired and trying to function and they don't have the same energy other kids. Like you want to sleep a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And pain. Yeah. Sometimes you're dealing with pain. And as a lot of you know, when you're in pain, it's very hard to focus on school. your day. Yeah. So for him with school and trying to focus and it's hard to pay attention. It is. And when you're in pain. Right. And for him, he's homeschooled. But a lot of kids with this, that's not an option. So they are at a public school. And so it's important to understand what they are facing in addition to just being a kid. And so this can also lead to a lot of anxiety, which is another aspect of this disease. I think a lot of people are diagnosed with anxiety disorder with this because it kind of goes hand in hand. Something I want to also mention, like we always say we're a team. Yeah. And when we're fighting this disease, we are a team. But it's also very important to make sure that Mason is an individual still. So we want to be a team when we're fighting this. But Mason is also so much more than Crohn's disease. Being an advocate, there's that balance because you talk about it. And so it kind of, it, it feels like your life, but you want to make sure that, you know, Mason is first and that being an advocate is second to who he is. So also developing that as well is important for mental health. So you want to teach your kids to be an advocate and raise awareness, but also, you know, live their lives that not being identified as you know, solely Crohn's disease. So let's jump into what we found on the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. And I will put this on this link on our site for you guys. So you can access all this because it's very easy to find and it's very important and helpful because you may not even realize having this disease, how many triggers there are that you're fighting daily. And so it's important to recognize this and realize why this is affecting your mental health. We're going to, we're just going to see how many I relate to <laughs> how many mason relates to and try to go through it's these a fun is, game yeah it's super fun yeah, but super important yeah, it is so living with a chronic and often painful illness can mean stress worry depression anxiety that you may feel along the way and did you feel any of these things i feel i mean like along the way i did feel pain obviously illness because Crohn's is an illness mm -hmm. um Stress definitely because I was stressed to go every almost every week to the doctors yeah. to do you appointments. Were going a lot for a yeah. while. Uh, when we came out of the hospital, we went a lot more. Um, but I was I was stressed because we had to go almost every week or more time, uh, more mm -hmm. than one time every week, uh, to get shots and fusions and checkups and all these things. So that was a little stress. They wanted me to keep getting. They want me to get better, so they kept right. looking for that. So that kind of I think that leads to with stress that's like anxiety because yeah. i think it's stressful to you or frustrating when things aren't progressing maybe as fast maybe as they're getting worse you know because right. i want i want to be being, i don't i don't want to be going downhill i want to be going uphill right so i think for a lot of you out there and because it's a roller coaster because you are can be feeling great one day and the next day things are completely different and it's so out of your control it can be very anxiety inducing i and i and i agree with everything he said from a caregiving perspective. And the other thing that they reference on here is there can sometimes be a denial of the disease, uh, the need for dependence or dependent behaviors, feeling overwhelmed and having a poor self-image. So all these things can lead to mental health issues. And I think, um, I think denial of the disease is a big one. It is. When I, um, when I first had Crohn's disease, I wanted to deny having it because I was doing fine you say before it like I didn't I didn't think there was a big problem like that and all of a sudden you have Crohn's disease and it yeah. changes your life um your entire life so you yeah. just want to deny that you have Crohn's disease and maybe you'll go back to normal but there really is no denying it because it's there and it's not going to leave but you just want to deny it because maybe if you deny it maybe it will just leave right no it's not going to do that I think but... a lot of and I think adults this is not just for kids I no. think adults do this too but I think the sooner you accept the diagnosis and take charge of your health it's very important because like Mason's saying it's it's not going to go away 
this is a lifelong incurable disease. disease. So the sooner you can start treating it and treating all aspects it. of it and embracing it, it's challenging in a different way, but you can learn to live and cope you know? and cope. Yeah. There's yeah. not really anything else you can do. Yeah. I think that, you know, having the poor self-image mentioned was also because of things like prednisone and steroids. You guys are put on these heavy dosages that, you know, cause moon faces, moon face. they call it, which is, which, which is not making names. No, because I thought they were kind of being mean yeah. when they said that about Mason in the hospital. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, he's got moon face. I was like, that is, that's not, that's, and I realized it was a term for the steroids, what it, yeah. what it does. And so it can lead to, you know, stretch marks and because you can gain weight quickly, you can lose weight quickly. And weight is a very touchy subject for these guys because they can be eating a lot of food and not gaining weight and losing weight and others go in the opposite direction. And so it can be very difficult with this to manage your self image along with all the pain you're going through on the inside. So it can be a challenge. So um, rates of depression are higher among patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis as compared to other diseases in the general population. So that's, that's what they have on there. Um, I really like depressed. No, but we addressed your mental health pretty Pre- quickly. Pretty fast. Yeah. So there wasn't really a chance to be depressed. right. We were, um, I mean, you still could be depressed yeah. even when seeing it, but, but we had all the tools in place and, yeah, and getting your better. pain levels under control was huge. That was that definitely helped. a big thing. So it's an important fact to mention because it is so high among IBD patients and in any chronic illness, but it's just important for you guys to know that I think this statistic should show you you're definitely not alone. And there's a lot of you out there. So there's no shame in it. Maybe you are struggling and you could use some help. So there's that. And uh, so kind of, we just talked about the next thing that they have is to recognize the signs that you're struggling emotionally and seek help just as you would for your physical symptoms. So kind of touched on that already, that it is important for you to realize that your mental health is just as As important important as your physical health, as your physical health. And not to let that go. And I, and I know it's kind of difficult because there's so many appointments. I think that was one of the reasons why also you were like, I don't want to see somebody yeah. else. Yeah, because we go to the doctor, the, the doctors or ophthalmologist or the dentist, you know, so much. The dermatologist, the, cardi- the cardiologist, yeah, all, those, all those the, wonderful people, you know, and you're getting They're just doing their jobs. X-rays and you're, yeah, it's so it's a, it's a lot. And so I think people feel like I don't have time for that, but mm-hmm. you do. And you have to, you have to, make you time have to treat it like any other appointment yeah. and make sure that you do make time to treat your mental health. And that goes also for caregivers, Yay. which we <laughs> talked about too. So yeah. and here's a few questions that were on the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation website that uh, I'm going to ask Mason and see what his answers are. And then I'll read to you what they have on here. And these are important because these are things that people who don't understand the disease may have questions about, or these can be questions that someone with the disease may not know the answers or may be curious. Now, remember, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to know the exact answer. I'm not going to get completely correct. (laughs) No, (laughs) that's not expected, luckily. So yes, the first question is, can tension and anxiety cause ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease? Anxiety will not cause Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis it can only make it worse. But anxiety uh, could definitely like wake them up from hibernation. Not hibernation. What what is the word for it? Yeah, no, that's a good, I mean, that's a good analogy to it. That it's lying dormant in your system. Yeah, and because they really don't know what causes Crohn's. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 15% of people with this disease will have somebody related to them that has it as well. And in some of the groups I'm in, you'll see a lot of, one sibling will get it and another one will. Oh. So there is well. suggestion that there's a strong genetic connection to this, but but still the why is this happening? And uh, why is it waking up? Why right? Why like, do you have it? Why can you live a normal life and think everything's great? And, and then all of a suddenly sudden it just is here. It's there. So the answer on here is there is no evidence for this. Inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, is a biological disease. Tension and anxiety can change how patients experience their disease, but they do not cause either disease. Pretty close. Yeah. So kind of what you were saying. So basically it can make it worse if you have it and the anxiety, it can, it can cause the disease to get worse, but it's not going to cause you to have the disease. So don't blame yourself. Right. It's don't important blame yourself to know. Having Crohn's 
or colitis. And I, this kind of is the same thing, but it says friends and neighbors. Um, I like how it says friends and neighbors. <laughs> so it's like, we're not going to say friends and family. We'll yeah, just we're say, say neighbors. neighbors. We'll put them on the spot. <laughs> so, Poor neighbors. You know, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't imagine, but, um, <laughs> but it's kind of funny, but this is what it says. It says friends and neighbors often say that colon problems are caused by nerves and emotional upset. Is this correct? So based on what we just discussed no no right there's no evidence that emotions cause crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis maybe can make it worse but it can make it worse yeah but it's not going to cause it now i don't know why your neighbor would come next door just to tell you that but (laughs) (laughs) you know we have really good neighbors actually our neighbors bring us eggs from their chickens which is really cool (laughs) and sometimes stuff from their garden um so that's exciting but uh no our, our neighbors don't usually approach us with these kind of things but yeah uh, we don't know what kind still of a great question on. so yeah. <laughs> so next one is are patients justified in feeling guilty that they've brought the illness upon themselves and thus caused problems to themselves and their families no you should not feel guilty for causing Crohn's disease or colitis or any disease it's it's not your fault for causing it did because thinking about, did you want Crohn's disease? No. Why would you want it? <laughs> no. You can't. You can't give it to yourself. So you can't really like cause it. You can't be like, oh, I want Crohn's disease. I'm going to give myself Crohn's disease. You can't do that. It's not like that. So right. you can't really blame yourself for it. So don't blame yourself for it. Yeah. And it's a uh, their answer on here says not at all. Uh, feelings of guilt may result from the patient thinking that IBD is caused by something they did. No. However, this is not correct, and there's nothing that you could have done or could have avoided doing that may have prevented this disease. It's important to remember some patients may experience an increase in disease activity after a stressful event. However, the patient did not cause the flare. And and I also think it's important um, for adults and kids to not worry that, because I think part of this, what happens is you see what others go through, and especially with caregivers, Mason sees what happens on our end to manage this disease. And I think adults can see how it even affects their own relationships. And it's, it's tough because sometimes I know he gets frustrated. We we just had an insurance, uh, not insurance, I should say, but a billing issue. Oh, issue, you know, and it's constant. There's always bills coming in for the different procedures, the different medications, there's authorizations. And so there's a lot of times, at least once a month where it seems like we have some kind of challenge and I'm, on the phone and Jason, my husband's on the phone trying to help. And so I think a lot of times there's also blame, like you feel bad, like, Oh my gosh, this is causing problems, Mm -hmm. but it's just important to remember it's part of it. And it is not anything anyone can do. You're just, you know, you just get through it. And one way at a time. Yeah. And it's important for any kids that you should know your parents, it might be difficult, but they don't mind. Yeah. And they want to help you and they want to see you healthy. So don't worry about that. It's a journey for all of us and we're in it together. A wild and, journey. Yeah. So it's, and it's important for, I know adults, this is pretty difficult to navigate on your own. It can be very difficult. So that's why this is another important question with mental health. And it can, you know, I don't want anyone feeling out there. You don't want anyone feeling like they did something to cause their flare or cause anything. It's just, they didn't. It's the disease. Yeah. So let's move to the next part, which is navigating life with IBD and how that affects mental health. Maybe if you don't have IBD, how do you think someone with IBD navigates life? I'm going to go through some more points. This is all from the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. So you guys will all be able to find this and reference this again if you need it. So sometimes symptoms can lead to stress and anxiety as you try to manage your disease and go through daily living. However, this stress and anxiety can in turn lead to more symptoms. And I think a perfect example of this is when Mason was first admitted to the hospital. This was before we knew he had Crohn's disease. Yeah, before and, it was um, that. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so he thought he was just getting a few tests. And so. Some blood and infu- blood transfusions and things, you know. Well, that. you didn't even know about that yeah. yet. <laughs> You're all spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> Here's blood transfusions. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, that did happen. But yeah. when we first got there they were doing all kinds of tests and, and x-rays, chest x-rays and labs, um, blood draws. And then they had to put in an IV and for him, 
he it was, was crazy it, and you also do that covid test at the time where like oh, yeah remember? it was like yeah. the crazy one like back because this was back in june of 2020 and so mason would hide in the bathroom <laughs> and yeah i mean it's fitting i have Crohn's disease right and so in the so a lot of the doctors in the first couple of days were thinking mason had anxiety that was causing these issues it's how his body was starting to change very rapidly things were happening um quite it was it was quite quick i think mason having that anxiety and having oh, all those gosh. tests definitely made yeah. it worse which is why i think when we got there all of a sudden he was a different kid and a few days in it was like very apparent something was was, wrong. was definitely wrong anxiety or stress can make it worse and i think a lot of us can relate because even anyone with regular digestive tracts when you get nervous things can change yeah. and so for someone with ibd it it's it can be very triggering to their system because their systems respond with inflammation and they start fighting and so again not your fault mm -hmm. it's just important to help manage these symptoms so the next one is it can be stressful to worry about how to manage your ibd symptoms outside of the comfort of your home so as far as navigating your life and trying to just live a normal life uh when you're in a flare yeah that's it's, stressful it's stressful to because you don't want to leave or no no, it's and and is like his caregiver. I understand this because even though I'm not going through it, I'm still physically yeah. handling the situation, and I can't go do my stuff either. Like I can't mm -hmm. just run to pick up groceries at the store. There's times where you do finally get you're like, okay, we can go, and you have to turn around and come home, and so that can be very aggravating. And I'm sure if you're working full time and you have to go into work and you don't want to call in sick that you can't really leave the proximity of a restroom at home, yeah. at home. And sometimes it's even just a matter of you need to lay down, you're in pain, um, even okay, walking. You can, and you can't really lay down at work. <laughs> no, you can't. No. I mean, you could, but <laughs> probably not going to turn out very well for you. <laughs> yeah, don't recommend. No. <laughs> no. Um, so so kind of what we also talked about, uh, this is our next point. IBD can impact how you look and how you feel both emotionally and physically. But as you deal with medication side effects, disease symptoms, nutrition changes, and surgery. surgery. So these are all big things and these are all part of navigating life with IBD. This is the reality of it. I think that for a teenager, it's, it's very difficult when looks are changing and things are happening that you're just, it's can't control. Yeah. Right. And it can be very frustrating and you just can hope you have a good set of friends that are understanding. And that's part of our speaking out. We just hope to make this more like something easy to talk about and something to say, oh yeah, you have Crohn's disease. It can change. Um, and that's part of the medication side effects and the disease symptoms themselves. Um, but nutrition changes, yeah, and that can be tough too because for some of some of you guys out there listening, you do have to change what you eat because things do trigger you. And that can be difficult. Like if you're all like people going out to dinners, um, just family dinners, and maybe they think you're just being picky. And it's uh, very important for you to just keep educating and explaining why you may not be able to eat that and and hopefully people just be understanding of it and say yeah cool it's not your fault <laughs> yeah it's all right so those things can be difficult and luckily mason can have pizza and things yeah. like that but i know some of you listening can't. you can't and that's got to be really tough you know so these are challenges that just other people don't have to think about and you always are in the back of your mind having that's to important. consider the other thing here is they have pain, feeling tired and weak, lacking energy are commonly reported symptoms among IBD patients. So this can make your daily life difficult yeah. because maybe you had plans and maybe you got up and we're going to go to Disneyland and now... And your brain's like, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> so it has to be really fun planned. And, or maybe you was, we're going to go to the beach and or go somewhere where restrooms weren't really nearby going on a hike. And so you may make plans but your body makes other <laughs> plans. So it's kind of like your body is like fighting you, right? Sure. Like the, it's, it's like, like I'm going to go on a hike and your legs like, I hurt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Joint pain, yeah. that kind of thing is up for you is really big. So, uh, so yeah, so that can be difficult and uh, just 
things you, it's not that you don't want to do these things. It's just that sometimes you physically can't. So that's, that disappointment and frustration can be difficult. Let's see. It's stressful and isolating to feel like you're being treated differently because of your Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, or to be worried that others may see you differently. What do you think on that? Do you feel like you're treated differently? Do you think for you being treated differently is a negative or a positive? Depending, I guess, what it is. I see it both ways because mm -hmm. I can't really like go to places as often as other people do. But or if you do, when we you have to have a mask. mask. I see that um, not being able to go uh, to places as often is kind of annoying. But yeah. I still, but at the same time, I see it as it's helping me, um, so I don't get sick, and it's making sure I'm healthy. So I can see it as being a little annoying, but I can also see it as it's helping. And um, I see it both ways. And for you, I I think from a caregiver caregiver's perspective, from what I can see is that uh, Mason, like as far as being treated differently, uh, there's positive ways he's been treated differently. Yeah. Um, there's also ways that he's been treated differently by people not understanding this disease and that has affected relationships but then there's other relationships that have really flourished and he's made uh some cool wow. friends and uh and had a, and, and really has a platform to speak out for others so i feel like it can be isolating but i think we've worked hard to make you feel surrounded by support groups and people and so i, I think that's voice. important and he has a voice and that's kind of like that you find that key you need to find your key to what makes you feel strong and empowered with this disease and everyone might be different so it's important to get out there maybe volunteer at some organizations just just get out there and see what is that key that is going to unlock that happiness in you to feel empowered and feel like you have some control over this? I think that for you, you have been treated differently, but in a positive sense, yeah. I would say outweighs the the negative the for us. Yeah. So yeah, but you got to search that out too. It doesn't always just come to you. You yeah. have to, you have Take to some work. Yeah, <laughs> it does, but it's worth it. Yeah, it is. So IBD can make it hard for you to feel understood and supported. Uh, instead, we want you to feel empowered. So this we're just talking about yeah i think that it is difficult because these guys do feel misunderstood so that's why they it's best for you guys to educate and raise awareness and talk about it so there is that mutual understanding so people do feel understood and feel supported yeah. so life with ipd can be a roller coaster of physical emotional social and financial complications and your loved ones often go along for the ride so this kind of from a caregiver's perspective, or if you're an adult with this and you're managing your disease, you know all about the financial complications that come with this. And financial issues are anyone can relate listening because financial issues are something we can all relate to. And when you have your normal life finances and then you have medical finances, there's a whole new level of responsibility to make sure that those become a priority like a mortgage payment you know you want to make sure that he is the best care is available whatever your situation is there are options out there and i encourage you to talk to your gi doctors about those options if uh, you feel like you're not getting the right coverage or the right treatments available to you so um but it's but that can be very challenging and uh, you and as a caregiver i don't necessarily want mason to feel like you know, oh no, mom's upset again because there's another bill. <laughs> oh, yay. Another yeah. Bill. So, but, but at the same time, I need him to be aware because at some point this, again, this is going to be his mm -hmm. uh, responsibility. We'll always be there for him. Of course. Always. Yeah. Yes. He knows that, <laughs> but uh, it's so, so it's, it's a balance of trying to kind of educate them and show them this is what life is like. But at the same time, you know, you don't have to get you just got to not get too upset about it and just do everything you can to organize your finances so that stress is kind of alleviated. So we just, we budget, we we have everything organized and make sure that Mason is able to get the exact care he needs. There, But the physical, emotional, social, uh, yeah, I think for you, it's it's all See, over the and place. And that's what we call the wonderful roller coaster of life. Mm -hmm. It's always, I know. And I think everyone else is like, oh yeah, I we're all on roller coasters. Mm -hmm. But uh, Crohn's is like a wild one. Yeah, there's loops, loops, uh, there's yeah. Loop -de -doos. yeah, there's different roller there's coasters. There's corkscrews. Yeah. <laughs> Crohn's is like all of these things thrown together. <laughs> so it, it is a roller coaster. 
And you think just when you think, I got this down, I understand it. It's like, yeah, no, no, there's going to be something else. So you just got to expect it and just got to roll with it. And, uh, but that's, that's why mental health again can be so effective because those things can be very difficult day to day to deal with. Mm. And, uh, the last thing we're talking about is coping strategies. These are going to be from the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. So we may throw in our own strategies if we see fit, but we're going to let you know what we think about them. So they say, uh, struggling with mental health issues can make it more difficult to stay on top of managing your disease, going to work or school or participating in relationships with your family and friends. The stress of feeling bad emotionally can also take a toll on your physical health. True. Yeah. So yeah. fair. Um, so the first coping strategy, and uh, this is this is what we are saying, uh, just to seek professional help, talk to your doctor. I think that's the first line of defense is to talk to somebody like a doctor. Or a and, therapist uh, or mm-hmm. a nurse, you know, but yes. usually a doctor because the doctor right. knows the most about you. If you have a therapist, yeah. talk to your therapist for sure. But if you're kind of like feeling lost, uh, they they can give you referrals and they can help. It's also good for your doctor to know what's going on. Like, why? what are you struggling with? Maybe like Dr. B, Mason's doctor, she's really, really concerned always with his mental happiness and health. You know, she's very big on that. And so we're going to have a fun announcement coming up that's going to be happening in a few weeks that we haven't told anybody. So if you're listening, we're going to find out who listens this long okay. because we're like pretty far into this. So if you're, if you're watching, this is a secret thing. Nobody knows about this. So his doctor gave me some permission to go to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes, with obviously precautions in place, we yeah, have to definitely. be careful. So if you're listening and I don't know who you are, because this is a big deal. If you know, <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be like, you guys are going to Disneyland because there's a, there's actually another cool surprise yeah. involved in that. And uh, we'll save that. Maybe you have to for... save it for the next episode. You have to yeah. watch. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, we will. We'll, we'll definitely be talking about it. But his doctor is, she's like, go have fun. It's like, you know, it's, this, it's important because this disease is not going to change. Your treatments aren't going to change. And we can't sit around waiting for that to change because- the treatments aren't going to change unless one of them fails. Right. Or they will fail. And we don't want no. that. <laughs> no. Just got to hope they don't change. Right. You don't want them to change. What we would love is a new treatment that is guaranteed to work and is every eight weeks or something. That would be ideal. But right now it's every two weeks. There's a decision of being careful and taking the precautions you can, but also enjoying life. Yeah. So, uh, so she's very, she's very good yeah, about that. Yeah, keep it even, you know. Um, the other thing they have is to tackle it one day at a time. And this is kind of like our one wave That's at funny. a time yeah. saying, because it's the same thing when you're, Reworded, when you're surfing, you can't take in every single yeah. wave coming in. I'm going to wait four waves at a single uh, at the yeah, same time. It, that doesn't happen. You, you choose a wave, yeah. you ride it in, and then you head back out and choose the next one you're going to ride mm-hmm. in. And uh, some will be more difficult than others. Some will just be a lot of fun. And uh, so, yeah, so that's kind of what our motto is. And so one day at a time, try not to focus on overwhelm yourself with everything. So this is what the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation says. The first thing they have is they they say that facing the day may feel exhausting and overwhelming. So here's some coping strategies to help with those things. So let's let's see what they say, Mason. Plan something special to look forward to, even if it's something small, like watching your favorite TV show, eating your favorite breakfast, calling a friend, or taking a long walk on your lunch break. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. Uh, It's definitely good. Um, But like, if the surprise is big or the surprise is small, it doesn't really matter because you still have something to look forward to Mm -hmm. at the end of your day or whenever. Right. Um, something to like a checkpoint, I guess. Yeah, right. Too. Like, yeah. Oh, like okay. a checkpoint, right? Like something I'm going to get there and then yeah. I can check this off. And it's like a reward to yourself. Mm-hmm. Treat yourself with that and give yourself those little goalposts to get to throughout the day. So I have something to look forward to. Right. So that's important. So little things like that. And I think that's something that's realistic. Yeah. I think everybody can, can do that. Also prepare the night before for the day ahead to eliminate as much stress as you can in the morning. This can include laying out your clothes or packing your lunch for the next day. So you didn't see that. Yeah. Do you... I'm, try- I'm trying to think of a way I do that. Uh... Yeah. Cause your day's a little different yeah. because you're homeschooled and a lot of times you do, we lay out clothes or have mm-hmm. those ready, make sure things are washed and ready to go. 
So it's uh, not a mad dash to mm -hmm. get ready to leave anywhere because we do have appointments and we usually leave pretty early to get down to the hospital. So I have to have so, everything set up, you know, yeah. so you're not like, oh, I have to put this here, here. And, yeah, yeah. So just set it up. I think that helps sleep. better with sleeping. Maybe yeah. that's one of the things too, because you're not thinking about it like, oh my gosh, I, I need to get up and I need to do this. So I think that does help. So I, I think that's a good coping that's skill good. to help with your daily life. Um, take the time to put on your favorite outfit shave or put on makeup <laughs> make making the effort to look your best will help you feel more positive about yourself and will encourage others to respond positively to you so i mean i think it's not like i'd be walking everywhere in a tuxedo even though i really want to wear a tuxedo everywhere not yeah, a suit, you suit, yeah not a tuxedo suit love to just wear a suit everywhere right and be like hey i'm, I'm eating lunch yeah exactly mm, I'm wearing a suit while i'm eating lunch i think um the important takeaway from this because some people are this and they're like putting on makeup is stressful for me i think that the takeaway is to do what special things that make you feel better about yourself so if it isn't you know, a favorite outfit or, or makeup, find what it is and, and look for that a comfortable shirt you like to wear. Yeah, yeah. Comfort is really key. I think for Mason, that's always been like, you know, having a nice blanket, having, you know, I think that's important too. I mean, Maybe that should there's be in a difference there. of staying home and wearing a robe other than going to work go and ahead. wearing a robe. You can't really bring your favorite blanket and robe to work. <laughs> um, I'm just sitting here and just hanging out of the register. Yeah. This is, this is going to vary depending on how your life and what that looks like. And so it's it's all about doing something that will make you feel positive about yourself. And, and when in doing that, others are going to respond to you in kind. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the thing. <laughs> kind of what we talked about, make your plans for the day ahead of time. Not like, like getting ready, but making mm -hmm. your plans. It's important to build structure into your day, no matter if you're in flare or in remission. Make sure to allow plenty of time for your medical care. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no joke on that one. Words of the week here. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cancel that really fun yeah. activity and, you know, put this really cool colonoscopy in its place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all jokes aside, it, it is important, important to plan ahead we have mason's appointments like most are set out to next somewhere into next year but like for him um we have like infusions we have to plan there every four weeks so those are planned well into next year and um so things like that so, you know what to expect mm -hmm. and it's simple well it's important because if we want to plan like say we do want to go somewhere or do something we always know that and we try to plan everything for like a Tuesday mm -hmm. because that way, if we're at another place and they say you need to make an appointment, like say we're at ophthalmology and they're like, you have to make your next appointment. We can put it on a Wednesday because yeah. we know Tuesdays will be. So we, we structure things so that we have certain days we know we'll be off. We have certain days we know we'll be hospital or medical. And, and so that's kind of how we structure it so we can plan around it. And that does help. So I think, I think making plans ahead of time alleviates a lot of stress Yeah. and having structure. It's kind of nice to know what to expect. Right. Yeah. And the next one is schedule time to rest. It is easier to get going and keep going if you know you have a built-in break. So that's kind of like that goalpost thing, right? Like having like something to know you best um, for yeah, for, time, yeah. for me, Between. I don't, uh, I don't schedule time to rest. Um, <laughs> sometimes you're just really tired. And so I think it's important to recognize that and set aside time if you can to rest. Mason, he has plenty of time in, built into the day for him to rest yes. as well. So that's very important for Mason to make sure that he has that downtime too. But you usually have a ton of energy. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, need, I don't need rest. So many people with this, like, I, I never know what to think because in some of the groups he's in, because he's on Stellara mm -hmm. and in Tivio. So Ustekinumab and Vitalizumab are the two he's on. And so in the groups I'm in, a lot of times people are like, oh, I feel so fatigued on this. <laughs> My son, like bouncing off the walls. So I don't, you know, I, I don't know what that exactly means. I don't know if it's because of his age. And, and sometimes he is tired. So he's not yeah. always like that, but I, it's it's hard to say if it's disease, if it's the treatment, uh, what it is. So whatever it is, take a rest if you need it. So that's what they say if you can. So um, allow yourself a little extra time to get going in the morning. Reading or listening to music may make it easier to get your day started. So sometimes, so we will have music in the morning. We'll sit, to listen to. Yeah, like I start off my up. morning. It does wake you up. It's kind of kind of fun. And so I'll sit down and I get my morning started. He's 
eating his breakfast and then he also has some time built in where if he wants to play some roblox Roblox. and so he doesn't mind getting up a little earlier so he can have a little bit of that time before we start school school. if you can do that before you go to work if you can give yourself a little extra time and but maybe too that's where you're going to fit in your time to rest so (laughs) so maybe that's for that time so maybe for you it's going to be well no i'm going to get extra sleep i'm not going to get up earlier so right again just depends on on the person on you the next one is socializing with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis means having to plan ahead. Yes. Yes. It does. That's because you it's need for appointments. Right. Because the next point on here is funny. It says locate bathrooms at your destination along the way. So it's important. Yes. That goes along with the socializing because if you're going to go out and you're going to go have dinner, you're going to go to a friend's house and uh, or if you're going somewhere like Disneyland, you need to plan ahead and know you know, where are bathrooms, where is a first aid station, um, things like that. But even just at a restaurant, you really do have to think about things and how far it is from your home. And there's an app um, on the uh, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. They have an app that helps you locate restaurants. Bathroom tracker. It is. It's pretty cool. There's like ratings and everything. So it's pretty cool. So you should check that out. So that's, that's helpful. Yeah. Sweet app. Pretty cool. Also, Talk to your friends and family about what kind of support you might need when you are out. So yeah, that's good, right? Be honest with them and tell them. And I think, yeah. Yeah. And I think if anything, they'll be understanding and they'll be happy to know like, okay, this is how I can support you. So maybe it'll make them feel like they're able to help you too. So are you going to yawn? No. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm trying not to sneeze. (laughs) Are you? Yes. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. This is the funny part of the video. I'm tired because this has been, yeah, we're like, we're getting through it. We're almost to the end. We're almost, almost there. to the end of the marathon. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Achoo. Well, you know what's weird? It's when you record these, like all of a sudden your nose itches. Yeah. Or there's like, even here, like I always want to like touch my shirt mm-hmm. or you're like, like this normal day, you're like, oh yeah. And then the second you start a podcast, you're like, yeah. My nose is itching. You're like, oh, now I want to sneeze. It's, it's fun. It's it's for some reason. I don't know if it's, we have, you know, lights on us. It's a dark day outside. Mm-hmm. It's drizzly. A drizzly it's San Diego. Day. Yeah. A drizzly San Diego. Which is unusual, actually. Day for summer. Yeah. So it's kind of different. So I'm like, but yeah, it's, I think you're all of a sudden you're like, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. So <laughs> it's like, it's all right. It's like, hey. if you need to yawn, go ahead. Just yawn. But a sneeze. Yeah. That might be a little disturbing to listeners. Uh, so. <laughs> I'll break through your truck. Yeah. Uh, so check out restaurant menus ahead of time to make a meal plan without feeling rushed. Very smart to do. There's so many options for you can look online now and you can look to see what they have to see if, what you can order. So you're prepared. And if you don't see anything that is friendly, maybe you're gluten free. Maybe mm-hmm. you are lactose free. Uh, maybe you're both of them. Maybe you're vegan. You know, I maybe there's all kinds of things. So check it out and know what you're looking at before you get there so you don't feel stressed or rushed. Um, Find what fits your diet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look ahead. A strong support system is crucial for people with IBD. So that is really important to get a strong support system around you. And that may look like just a few people that may look like one person that may look like many people. It's, it's again, it's, it's what it looks like for you, but that is very important. So having someone who you can check in with, maybe who you can talk to beyond a therapist, beyond a doctor, um, really important. And if, and if you're looking for a support system, try Facebook too. There's several groups on there that can be supportive and you can reach out to and Talking about your disease can help educate your friends and family about how you manage your illness while still living your best life. To know about what you're going through mm-hmm. and so they know uh, how they can help or um, how they can be of assistance. <laughs> right, exactly. Because uh, it's very important. And I think it, because it wouldn't be fair for you to get frustrated with somebody if they don't understand and you haven't taken the time to to help them understand. So I think it's that bridge you need you know, not to assume that somebody does get it because you have to remember before you had this disease, think back and would you have understood? Would you have known or getting into arguments or anything or getting hurt feelings? Mm -hmm. It's much easier to have conversations and talk. And I think that goes for a lot of things actually. And uh, we're going to wrap this up. We've been talking to you for a while about (laughs) this. 
And you I, get through without yawning. Yeah, <laughs> we know. Good job, Mason. Good job. I got through without sneezing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one fell asleep. Yeah. Uh, no, well, at least on our end. Maybe you listening. I don't know. <laughs> but we did okay. We stayed awake and uh, we we made yeah. it through. I know it was kind of extensive, but there was a lot to go through. And in the future, mental health episodes will probably cover a little differently. But I really want to cover what the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation has out there for you guys. And so I do want to end this by just reminding you, reach out to your doctor. Seek help. Don't stay silent. I hope that you can do that for yourselves if you've listened and you're feeling like you need any help. Best thing to do. Yeah. So we always remind you to follow us on Instagram at Team IB Determined to follow our journey. And if you made it this far, you'll get to see pictures of Disneyland because we'll be posting those and you'll know about it for anybody else. So. <laughs> and yeah, and we're going to keep you listening. So we're going to talk to you yeah. more about that next episode. So, Ooh. yeah, so yeah. that's our plan. If you've made it this far, again, I don't know how many people actually listen to the end of these. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm i not sure. Let us know if you do. If you we're, do. we're excited. Yeah. Amazing person. Yeah. If you stuck there with this, or if maybe, maybe some of you listen to half of it and come back to it. I do that with podcasts. So, like, if I'm running or working out, I may listen to half of one and then I'll come back to it on the next day when, so I don't always listen to something fully through either. So maybe that's what you do too. So if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to be notified when we post our videos, hit the bell uh, icon. Um, if you want to leave a comment, please do, because we are, we always read all of our comments. Not a lot of people comment. So it's really easy to do right now. Yeah. So, it's, but the few that do, and thank you. Yeah, we you. appreciate it and yeah. we like it. it it's so helpful the messages i do get like on instagram and stuff are so cool because it's it's really neat to see like who's listening and where they are and and to hear their stories and it's just it's a pretty cool experience so yeah, yeah. please comment message us and uh if you don't necessarily care about seeing us on youtube <laughs> but you want to listen you have those options to listen to us on spotify iHeartRadio, apple music amazon music and Buzzsprout. And there's several other sites as well. We always provide a link to you guys so you can find us anywhere. The link is in the description. Along with, we'll have the mental health link for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation there yeah. as well. So go check it out. Yep. All right. And hopefully next time we see you, Mason will be even better. better. I mean, every time we, I think we've done these, you've progressively yeah. gotten got better. better. So yeah. we're, we're just about there. So yeah. yay. Good news. So, yeah. So, all right, everyone, you guys have a good day, evening, morning, whatever Bye. it is yeah exactly where you are whatever you're doing oh but make it a good one yeah so. <laughs> all right we'll see you on the next episode bye bye we hope you will stick around tune in and reach out to us with your own journeys we are excited to give you an inside view of what it takes to be a caregiver and what it's like to be a patient and most of all we hope you'll maybe be able to play something you hear on here that might help you in your own life Sometimes life changes and it's all about how you handle the journey.